This video is going to show you how to use the inverse square law and explain a little bit about how it works. So the inverse square law is used in several areas of science. We can use the inverse square law to describe the pull of gravity, the push and pull of charged particles, light intensity, sound intensity, and other applications of it. So let's do a little example with spray paint, because spray paint also follows the inverse square law. So the inverse square law says the distance of separation is proportional by the inverse square to the intensity. All right, so let's see what that really means. So here's my blue spray paint. I press the button, and the paint comes out magically into the form of a sh uh, square, which typically it's a circle, but let's go with a square for now. So I'll put a piece of paper in front of it, and the, paper, the paint will land on the paper at some distance d. It'll have some type of brightness to it. So I'm going to call that the intensity. The intensity is whatever the uh, factor is that I'm measuring. It could be sound volume, it could be the brightness of the light, or it could just be the amount of force that I have. So that's going to be my intensity. So there's my spray paint. I'm going to use this as my comparison. And I'll move my paper back. I'm going to move it the same distance back, so now it's twice as far away. So the inverse square law isn't a, an equation. It's really a set of instructions. So what you do is you take the inverse of the distance and then square it. Not the exact number, but the factor of change. So I'm twice as far away. So because I'm twice as far, the factor of change is 2. So the inverse of 2 is a half squared is one fourth. So now on my piece of paper it's one fourth the intensity. Now this happens because the paint has to spread out and cover that much more area. Because it's covering out it's thinner. It's not as much paint as it was when it was at location uh, D. So because the paint is thinner it's not as bright. Now let's do it a little bit farther. Spray our paint back. And I've moved my sheet of paper all the way back so now it's three times the original distance. So you can see the space is a lot bigger than it's covering. And because it's covering bigger space, it's a thinner coating of paint on that bigger space. So the intensity is less. So the inverse of the factor, so the factor is three, it's three times farther away. So the inverse of three squared is one ninth. So now I have one ninth the intensity. If this was force, it would be one ninth the force, or one ninth the volume, or one ninth the brightness of the light, or whatever the factor is that we're looking at that follows the inverse square law. So it's pretty simple. It deals with ratios, not numbers. So I'm looking for the factor of change when I'm doing this one. So I typically have to look for words like double, triple, or halved, or something that says a factor of change of, say, three halves. And then the inverse square law is a set of instructions I follow to figure out how the intensity varies. Here's an example problem you can try right now. So you can stop the video and actually answer these questions. How much force is felt in each situation? Go ahead and stop the video and try to answer. All right, so I'm going to look at how much force is felt in each one. The first one's double the distance, that's the two. So inverse of two is one fourth. So that means I take one fourth my original force, which is 72, and that gives me 18. Three. So for the three, three, three times farther away, it's the inverse of three squared, so it's one ninth the force, or one ninth times the original force, which is one ninth times seventy-two, which is eight. And finally, four inverse of four is one fourth squared is one sixteenth. So seventy-two times one sixteenth, that means it's four and a half newtons now. Now let's show you how to do an example where the factor of change isn't given to you, and you've got to determine that. So here at 4, 000, or sorry, 4 million miles, a spaceship feels an attractive force of 100 newtons. How much gravitational force will the ship feel at 2 million miles? First, I'm not going to convert over into SI units. I can just do it with these numbers because I'm looking for factors of change. So I've got to figure out what, what the factor of change is. I don't, I'm not given it this time. So basically, I'm thinking what number times 4 million equals 2 million? All right, so that number is going to be 2 million divided by 4 million or just half. So that's the factor of change. The factor of change is just one half. So the inverse square law is a set of instructions. The inverse of a half is two, squared is four. So I know that the force changes by a factor of four. In other words, it goes from 100 newtons to four times 100 newtons, which is 400 newtons.